Christian Pentecostal Mission International, Houston, Texas, presents Your Hour of Miracle. Are you dejected? Rejected? Battered? Confused or depressed? I have good news for you, there is hope. The blind see, the lame walk, sinners are saved, captives are set free, it is never a dull moment. Ministering, Dr. Frank Benjamin, host. Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, the General Overseer, and Reverend Dr. M. Ezekiel, the National and International Coordinator, come and experience the God of Wonder, CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. Two days. God made me a little girl, but not when I'm about to die. Am I talking to somebody? God made me successful, but not when my time is finished. God made me to be great, but not being great at the time that I'm going to get into the grave. How do you use your time? Praise the Lord. We are talking about one lady, one guy came here and then um, for counseling, we are talking about the wife. He says, my wife will spend, what do you say, two or three hours to make up. <laughs> Just to paint face and paint mouth and paint nose, two or three hours. <laughs> Hello. And when she finished spending this time painting mouth and painting nose, she will use her cloth at top there. She will not have time to go and wash the clothes. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the kind of wife I'm married. If you come to my house, no lipstick, no eye pencil, nothing like that. That's why we used to come to church on time. <laughs> because. And if we had lipstick and all those things, maybe we would have been wasting time. Or something would have dropped her at home and go to church. Praise the Lord. How do you spend your time? Even some of us that have children, do you really spend time with your children? There was this story, it might make you to cry. A little boy called the father. Say, Daddy. He says, Hey. Eh? Say, how much do they pay you per hour? I think that is either say $20 or so. He says, okay. And then they said, can you borrow me $10? Because he has already saved $10. Then he said, what do you want to do with money? You just small boy. But that's okay. I don't even know. Let me, let me just borrow him $10. Praise the Lord. The father gave him $10. He went under his pillow. But that is one ten dollars. Made it up. I said, Daddy, I want to buy one hour of your time. Oh. We that are parents, what time do you have with your children? Sometimes I feel so bad when I remember my kids are in Nigeria and I'm here. You know, I know that when I'm in Nigeria, I must have time to play with them. There will be time for us to play guitar. There will be time for us to run around. There will be time for us to go and do one thing or the other shot. Even apart from my children, I have time for kids too much. What time do you have to train your children? A child in one of our sons says, Who is responsible for the way our kids are being brought up? Is it the internet? All the stars on television. There is a story of a child did something wrong in a Bible school, in a children's Bible school, and the mother was, how, how can you do that kind of a thing? He was blaming the teacher. You, the teacher, you are the cause of it. Is that what I'm telling you in the children's department? The teacher felt so bad and called the child and said, Please, this thing you did, where did you learn it from? See, tell us, don't be afraid. You say, I learned it from television. Children are quick to copy, both the positive and the negative. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he grows, he will not depart from it. How do you have time for your children? 
Even at that, even if you have time for your children, do you have time for your children as a friend or as a bully? You know, some parents are not really friends. They are terror. I'm talking about the experience. When I was growing up, if I hear my daddy's um, said or motto, I will rush down into the room. I'm not studying, you know. I will sit down in the chair and keep on breathing. And when it comes, you just walk into my room, open the door, and he's willing, he will go back. <laughs> he was a terror to me. Not a father, not a friend. In fact, my father never became my friend until when I came to America. I'm, I'm being honest to us. He never became my friend. Rather, the person that was my friend was my stepfather. Praise the Lord. Are you a friend to your children or a terror to them? Are you the kind of father or mother that when your children are coming, ah, that is coming, everybody will behave. They are not showing you their true character. They are only pretending. And one day, take it from me, they will rebel. But when you take time to become friends with them, take time to understand what they are doing, even if it is wrong. You see, there's, there's always four perspectives of a particular object. And if you don't see that object from their own perspective, you will not understand what they are trying to say. Forget that you are old, forget that you are mature, forget that you are more experienced, but understand the perspective they are seeing you from before you can explain it to them. Praise the Lord. That was the time I was praying with my wife when we were in Nigeria. When she beat the children, you know, she's a teacher, so you know how teacher used to behave. I said, no, this is not correction. You are avenging your anger on them. That's the way you, you treat children, you are not correcting them. You are already avenging on them. And as a way you handle children, they will take you as their friend. They can confide in you. They will explain to you. They will open up to you what their problem is. Do you have time for your children? Or if you have, the whole time you have is just run from Jericho to Jerusalem. I will, I will end with this story. A man, very rich man, married a beautiful wife. And after some time, there was a problem. What was the problem? The wife got pregnant. Who pregnant the wife? The neighbor. And the man was angry. Ah, how come? You disappointed me. I did everything for you. I bought TV for you. I got a big car for you. I bought cars for you. Whatever you're looking for, I gave to you. The, man, the woman asked the man a question. Did I marry TV? Did I marry Mutu? Did I marry big house? No. I married you, but you are never there for me. So tell me, who is to blame the woman? <laughs> Praise the Lord. How do you spend your time? Shall we spend it? Christian Pentecostal Mission International, Houston, Texas presents Your Hour of Miracle Are you dejected? Rejected? Battered? Confused or depressed? I have good news for you, there is hope. The blind see, the lame walk, sinners are saved, captives are set free, it is never a dull moment. Ministering, Dr. Frank Benjamin, host. This program is a miracle service. Therefore, what you have come here to do is to receive your miracle. It's not a day of too much of talk talk. It's a day of the manifestation of the power of God. Therefore, something will happen this morning. Holy God! the power. That's the power. Yes, yes. Ha, ha. I said it. I said it. Oh my God. What an awesome anointing. What a power. What's that step? What's that step? What's that step? What's that step? 
What a power, what a power. Let me let the power is there. That's the power, that's the power. That's the power, somebody help that's the power. That's the power, that's the power. That's the power, that's the power. Oh my God, look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. Yeah, no this here. Yeah, no this here. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. The power, the power. Ah, that's it. The power, come on. That's number two, yes, Lord. Go to me, seven of them. Please all shall help me. Seven of that's number two. Seven of them, seven of them. Where are they? God. Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, the General Overseer, and Reverend Dr. L. Ezekiel, the National and International Coordinator, come and experience the God of Wonder, CPM. I'll be discussing about talents. Let me just um, say something that I forgot to say about time, when we talk about time. It's, it's a poem. Amen? It says, all of us realize the value of time. How do we value one year as a student who failed in grades? What is the value of one month? As a mother whose baby arrived prematurely, how much do we value one week for the sailors trapped in a submarine on the ocean floor? It was the difference between life and death. How much do we value one hour? Ask someone who missed a connecting flight because the first flight was delayed by one hour. How much do we value one minute? Ask someone who had a heart attack in a restaurant with a paramedic sitting at the next table. How much do we value one second? Ask an Olympic swimmer who just missed qualifying by three one thousandth of a second. Praise the Lord. How do you value your time? Amen? Amen. But this morning, we're not talking about time. We've talked about time. Then we're still going to talk about time. We're talking the part two on talent. And that has to do with gifts. So I'm going to do a little, a little bit of illustration before we read the scripture this morning. Ah, uh, what? Here's a comb. Here's a comb. Okay? With the eyeglass. This one's going to be a professor. Come. Praise the Lord. Uche child, you to come. I need your help. I want to do an illustration. Amen? Praise the Lord. I'm going to give us gifts this morning. Amen? Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Turn and face the church, please. Turn and face the church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those are different gifts, right? Okay, this one has gifts. This one has gifts. This one has gifts. Amen. Amen. We are talking about gifts this morning. We are going to ah. Uh, why do you drop your own gift? You don't want it. You don't like it. Okay. Problem. Are you sorry? Now nah, let open your own gift. Let me see. <laughs> see more. Put it right now. I want to see. I want to see. You open it later. Let, let us just see. Let, let us see what is inside now. Eh? Okay, if you don't want to open it, no problem. Go and sit down. No one. If you have to open your own gift, let's see. Eh? What is inside? Microphone. You say his own gift is microphone. Praise the Lord. Okay, come, please, and go back to your seat. You may open your own gift. Let's see. Drum set. Okay. Go and sit down. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, there's something we saw in that in the illustration. There were four of them that was given a gift. The other one was not happy with his gift. What did he do? Drop it on the altar and walked away. When I start preaching, I will tell us what that means. Amen. Okay, out of the four people that got a gift, 
two of them decided to open their gate. But one said, I will not open it. I said, open it. He said, lie, lie. I don't want to open it. Hello. And I put pressure on him to say, please open the gift. He refused. You know what opened her gift? When she opened her gift, we discover that there is something in that gift. Until it was opened, we did not know what was inside of it. But when she opened it, we discovered what was inside of it. And then when you discover what is inside, then you can make use of it. This moment we're going to talk about discovering your gift. Discovering your gift or your talent. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. Are you there? Yep. Please put for me. Christian Pentecostal Mission International, Houston, Texas, presents Your Hour of Miracle. Are you dejected? Rejected? Battered? Confused or depressed? I have good news for you, there is hope. The blind see, the lame walk, sinners are saved, captives are set free, it is never a dull moment. Ministering, Dr. Frank Benjamin, host. This program is a miracle service. Therefore what you have come here to do is to receive your miracle. It's not a day of too much of talk talk, it's a day of the manifestation of the power of God. Therefore something will happen this morning. Yes, yes. Ha, ha, ha. I said it. I said it. Oh my God! What an awesome anointing! What a power! What a step! What a step! What a step! What a step! What a power! What a power! Let me the power is there. That the power. That the power. That the power. Somebody help! That the power. 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 Oh my God! Look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. The anointing is there. The anointing is there. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! The power. The power. That's it. The power. Come on. That's number two. Yes, Lord. Go to me. Seven of them. Please, all shall help me. Seven of last number two. Seven of them. Seven of them. Where are they? God. Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, the General Overseer, and Reverend Dr. M. Ezekiel, the National and International Coordinator. Come and experience the God of Wonder. CPM. Praise the Lord. There's a time I want us to bring out from that thing. Let's go back to our illustration. We're going to talk about glorifying God with our talents or our gifts. Now, four people were giving gifts or talents this morning. One of the four of them decided that I don't want it. He abandoned his gift. They are like many of us. There's nobody that is created by God that God did not give a gift. But some of us behaved like that person this morning who said, no, I don't want it. How do you say don't want the gift? Number one, he did not open the gift. Some of you, some of you have been given a gift. Instead of you to use that gift to glorify God, you abandoned it. Some even took the gift, but they are not using it to, to the glory of God. I gave us an illustration last week Sunday. Pardon me, I'm going to mention it because we don't know this girl I'm talking about. When I was growing up, we had a group, a musical group. In that group, I can remember the names. We had Sister Nkase, Sister Endurance. I was the leader of the group. We had a man. We had Ralph. We called him Doctor of Bars. We had Peter and Paul. And then we had Godwin. Today, Godwin is one of the greatest singers in Redeemed Christian Church of God headquarters. Without him, Redeemed goes nowhere in headquarters. And he has traveled all over the world singing gospel to the glory of God. But so much was heard about him, Apostle Godwin. He was in my group. Peter and Paul 
And then, then they are still with your name. But then there have been so many places. Peter was on the drum. But Peter and Paul, then, both of them were on the drum. Later, Paul went to the palace and Peter remained on the drum. Hallelujah. Well, along the line, I took to call it, but I still practice my gift anyway. But there were three or four of us that today nobody cares about them and they did not end up well. This boy joined the way ministry, but he was good spreading a different kind of gift in the way ministry. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. When men that are not born again are put in the position of talent and they are handsome, no one cares we do with them. Until at the time, I had to suspend him from the way ministry. Today, he's still going from one place to the other. Not doing anything good. It is good. Sister Gerard, after some time, she went into the music industry to do backups. And I know what happens in the industry. I don't mean to say 99.9% .9 of musicians, both gospel musicians, are not born again. Even if they are born again, they are born again does not get to the level of sexual immorality. I know them, I've worked with them. Apart from being a preacher, there are certain things I do when I was in Nigeria and productions in the studio. I spent 24 hours in the studio every day. I've met with stars, both gospel stars and worldly stars. And there's not one that I can vouch for when it comes to the issue of immorality. I say both gospel, not one. All these stars you are looking at, not one I can vouch for. Not to talk of the worldly ones. So when I got started to the industry, of course, the matter that happened in the industry, she started sleeping with for one producer to another. The last time I met Endurance, I was doing a production and she was doing a backup. This girl still have the voice, but the glory is no more there. She can still sing, but something was wrong. There's a difference between entertaining people and ministering to people with your gift. I can stand on this altar and sing and bamboozle you and play. Ah, that guy is a good instrumentalist. But another person can stand on this altar, play the same thing I played. There will be a difference. This morning I was listening to Party of Asi, and I was telling my wife, I said, there are only two or three instruments in that music his voice, his boss guitar, and Shekhar. My wife said, Are you sure? Party of Asi's music. Only three instruments. There's no backup singer in his music. His voice, his box guitar, and shaker. But listen to Patrick Bassi, you will feel like crying. You feel like rapture. What is different? He's not entertaining people. He is ministering to lives. Christian Pentecostal Mission International, Houston, Texas, presents. Your Hour of Miracle Are you dejected? Rejected? Battered? Confused or depressed? I have good news for you, there is hope. The blind see, the lame walk, sinners are saved, captives are set free, it is never a dull moment. Ministering, Dr. Frank Benjamin, Post This program is a miracle service. Therefore, what you have come here to do is to receive your miracle. It's not a day of too much of talk talk. It's a day of the manifestation of the power of God. Therefore, something will happen this morning. Holy God! That's the power. That's the power. Yes, yes. <laughs> I said it. I said it. Oh my God, what an awesome anointing. Watch yourself, watch yourself. What a power, what a power. In the media, the power is there. That's the power, that's the power. That's the power, somebody help me. That's the power. That's the power, that's the power. That's the power, that's the power. Oh my God, look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. The anointing is here. The 
anointing is there. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The power, the power. Ah, that's it for the power, come on. That's number two, yes, Lord. Go to me, seven of them. Please, all shall help me. Seven, that's number two. Seven of them, seven of them. Where are they? God. Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, the General Overseer, and Reverend Dr. M. Ezekiel, the National and International Coordinator. Come and experience the God of Wonder. CPM, Jesus Christ, is low. I met with this man, which I could still remember his name. This guy from the north, that was a good gospel singer. What is his name again? Panampasi Paul. Panampasi Paul. That was in Jonathan's program. Panapasi came to sing. Every other person sang. When Panapasi took the microphone, I was shedding tears. I wasn't crying because he has a very good voice, no. I wasn't crying because he had an accent, no. I was shedding tears because this man was bringing down the glory of God. There were a lot of musicians in that program that day. All of them are gifted and talented. And there was a difference. Why? In his gifts, God is being glorified. Okay, when I was analyzing all the members of our group, there was one I didn't mention her name anyway. Her name is Susan Cassiope. Of course, when Susan Cassiope grew up, you know what happened? She got married. And after she got married, that was the end of Nkasi. Nothing about music again. But well, I would say she was the first lady I taught her to play the keyboard. And she was playing very well in those days. Nothing about music again, not even anything about calling or whatever. She ended up becoming a buy and selling kind of a woman. Praise the Lord. God has given us gifts. The question is, what are we doing with it? The last time we started, we read about the talents. And then at the end of the day, the man that gave them the talents came back to ask them, how did they make use of that talent? How did they make use of the gift? How do you glorify God with these talents or gifts that you have? Listen, nobody on earth can tell me that God does not give you many gifts. Do you know that there's a style, a style of walking can attract somebody to God. Also gave us a testimony here about how he got converted. He saw a girl, a very beautiful lady. He had a motive. The sister had a motive too. But the sister had a gift. And then she said to use that her gift to win somebody to Christ. What was the gift? For the fact that she was a lady and she's beautiful, it's a gift to be used to the glory of God. Yes. Because some of us can see use that kind of gift to send people to hell. If you are a beautiful lady, your beauty is not meant for nightclubs. No, sir. If you are a beautiful lady, God gave you that beauty to attract men. But you can use that attraction that you have to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. I have one sister when I was growing up. Her name is Sister Kim and she was member of the of God Church. I won't miss my This sister was the most beautiful sister I've ever met in the Lord. Was sister Chile. When I say born again, she is born again. And she is beautiful. And if Mr. Chile say this, 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 I want to befriend this, this, that, say no problem. In fact, I don't love you come back. But on one condition, one condition, let's go out together. That's not like what I did. Let's go out together. Like together. Go out together. She won't tell you let's go to church. Because if you tell her let's go to church, she has already blocked you from, you know, she doesn't let us go out together. And if you are a natural man and someone tells you, let us go out together, the first place we're thinking of is a nightclub or Nigeria, Mr. Biggs. Right? I should not tell you, let's go out together. In those days, we have a girl that we used to have evening service. She said, on Sunday evening, come and take me out. But I will tell you where I'm going to. I don't know where she's taking you to.
CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord.